This is the Motorola Edge Plus 2023 disassembly, also known as the Edge 40 Pro or Edge X40 in different regions. However, these phones aren't entirely the same. They come in different memory configurations, and for the case of the Edge Plus 2023, a different battery size. Now is the Edge Plus 2023 an upgrade over the Edge 40 Pro or Edge X40? Stay tuned to find out. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you won't need to actually disassemble the phone to replace that. Looking at the other side, we can see a secondary microphone located here. There are 18 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be removed, but be careful since the flex cable for the LED lights and light sensor is still connected to the main board, so you'll have to carefully disconnect that when removing it. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic piece which are light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located here. The LED flash and back light sensor is located on that flex cable. And the wireless charging coil is located here with some graphite film top transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. There's another layer of graphite film which needs to be peeled off. The flex cables for the battery can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There are three coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the 60 megapixel front facing camera. Looking at the main board, we can see a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. The only camera with OIS or optical image stabilization is the primary camera.
There's another microphone on the top corner and the liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the Y sticker over here. Also the main board is a dual layer board. Looking at the back, we can see copper tape and graphite film to help transfer heat, as well as thermal paste. And we can see the connector for the primary camera. Once the copper tape has been peeled off, you'd be able to disconnect and remove the primary camera. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of these chips, as well as a copper heat plate over the RAM and processor. Now for the Edge Plus 2023, it only comes with 8GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. However, for the Edge 40 Pro and Edge X40, they come with 12GB of RAM. Also for the Edge 40 Pro, you only get 256GB of onboard storage. So as far as RAM goes, the Edge Plus 2023 is a slight downgrade. Moving on to the battery. There are no pull tabs provided to help you pry the battery off. So we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5100 mAh battery. So as far as the battery goes, there's definitely an upgrade. The Edge 40 Pro and Edge X40 both come with 4600 mAh batteries. So on the Edge Plus 2023, which is the US variant, you're getting less RAM, but you're getting a larger battery. If you needed to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate as well as the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself. You'd have to disconnect the battery cables and the screen cable and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, which is routed through an opening in the mid-frame, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid-frame and reassemble the phone. We can also now see these flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. There are two Phillips screws on the bottom subboard which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM reader board. Looking at the subboard or charger port board, we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. Here's a look at the other side. To remove the bottom speaker assembly, you have to carefully peel off the flex cable. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker assembly, and the speaker also has the little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. The x-axis vibrator motor is located on the bottom over here, and is held on some adhesive, and the same goes for the fingerprint scanner which is located next to it. There are also rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the speaker opening, and microphone openings on the frame. For anyone who's worried about puncturing the microphone or the microphone filter, both the microphone and the filter are seated above the hole. So if you use your SIM ejector tool on the wrong hole, you won't have to worry about it since neither of those will get damaged. There are also two more liquid damage indicator stickers on the bottom, one of which is under the charger port on the frame and the other one under the SIM reader. Once these flex cables have been peeled back, 
We have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. There is yet another microphone on this side of the frame which is attached to the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. So if you need to replace either of those, you'd have to just gently pull out this metal bracket which is seated inside of the frame. The proximity sensor board is located here and is held on with some adhesive. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top, which also has a little white foam balls that make it sound larger than it actually is. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.